All right, guys, how's it going? My name is Tavian, or Tay on Tech. Personally, I like to be called Tay on Tech. You know, it's a catchy name, and you know, it's my brand. But um, if you don't know me, uh, social media, primarily Twitter and Instagram. Hold up. All right, sorry about that, guys. Um, since the ice storm in Texas uh, last week, I've been having this weird thing with sometimes the fire alarm just go off and it just kind of disrupt everything. So hopefully they don't happen again. But back to what I was saying, um, you know, if you don't know me um, on social media, primarily Twitter and Instagram, I'm pretty much talking about uh, financial literacy, um, how to invest, uh, career advice, the tech industry, and pretty much anything that has to do with any of those topics. Um, you know, and pretty much the reason for me creating this video, I want to give like an insight on my journey into how I landed a six-figure job before I actually graduated college. Um, most people that see me now um, on Twitter and Instagram and things like that, um, they pretty much came out, I started following me after I had my success, so they didn't necessarily see all of the hard work and all the late nights that I had, and pretty much just like all the things I had to deal with before I got to where I'm at now. And so, you know, just pretty much what I want to do within this video, I just kind of want to share um, some of the things you can do, uh, some of the mistakes I made trying to get into the industry, uh, some things I wish I could have changed or done differently. And just overall, I just can give you that whole list of view on what you can do or what can help you to get into the industry as well. Um, yes, yeah, so I did go to college with that. Um, you don't need to go to college. Um, it definitely helps. Uh, you know, there's usually like this, uh, this, uh, this big misconception in the tech industry that you have to have a college degree, but you don't need one. Um, I don't have an engineering degree. Um, I have a degree in um, integrative studies, which is, and you know, on paper, it's like where's well, integrative studies, but it's just basically a customized degree plan. Um, so I did take engineering courses and things like that. I pretty much customized everything the way I wanted it to be. So, you know, I don't have an engineering degree. Um, but, so, let's kind of start it back from the beginning of like not my freshman year of college, you know, what was I majoring in originally, uh, what I was doing and all of that. So, um, if, you know, some of you guys may know, some of you guys may not know, but I actually ran track in um, college my freshman year. So I came in college my freshman year, I uh, wanted to major in business. Um, I just like, you know, I want to be an entrepreneur, I want to do this. But then as time went on, I started going to classes. I didn't really enjoy it. Um, I feel like trying to learn business in college, it, it just really bored me. I feel like the best experience that I, I'm gonna, for me to get the best experience, you know, try actually running a business. So that, that, that kind of thing like that. Like my freshman year, uh, my first semester of my freshman year, I had like a .9 GPA, huh? It wasn't because I was dumb or anything like that, but I just never went to class. It was just so boring. Uh, I just remember times, it was probably like 30, 40 degrees, and I walk outside, I was like, I'm not going to class today. <laughs> so, you know, just like everybody else in college, I had my, uh, you know, I had my mistakes, I had some things that I should have done differently, and all of that. So, my first semester, um, I was trying to major in business. My second semester, um, try it again, I was like, okay, you know, the first semester, I don't really like this. But let me try it again. So after the second semester, I had bad grades again. So um, at this time, um, I started kind of like noticing, like, you know, I, I have a thing for tech. Like I was always like jailbreaking people's phones. Um, I was fixing computers and all that, things like that. So I'm like, okay, well, you know, let me actually try to look into like something in the tech industry or looking in tech because in high school, I didn't know anything about tech really. I didn't know you can be a cybersecurity engineer. I didn't know about network engineer. I didn't even really know about coding at the time. So this is really something completely new to me or whatever. So, um, you know, as the summer went over, um, I used to go back and forth and uh, visit, Dally, <laughs> visit Dallas with uh, my brothers and stuff like that. And so, um, you know, I just started kind of like meeting people and networking with people on Twitter. And I started kind of saying like, you know, like the tech industry start. I just seen like a lot of people talking about this. Um, this is back in like 2015. So I'm like, uh, you know, people that, you know, in this industry uh, that's really good with computers, they usually make a lot of money. So in my head, I'm not gonna lie, like me getting into the industry, it was definitely a lot to do with how much money I can make or whatever the case may be. Um, I know a lot of times people or employees try to 
look down upon us because, you know, you want to do something for a certain amount of money or you want to, you know, do something for the money besides the passion. But, you know, like, I, I have bills to pay. I have, you know, there are certain things I want to do in life. Like, would you work for less than your virtual worth? No, so I'm not either. But besides that point, so, um, you know, I decided to move out here. And the biggest reason why I decided to move out to Dallas, Texas, was when I actually started noticing like the tech industry and people started talking about it. Um, I'm originally from Mississippi as well, by the way. So I went on Indeed.com and I was just like, IT specialist job, IT analyst. I just started looking up like these, you know, all these different uh, career titles or job titles, things like that. In the state of Mississippi, there was like two job postings for anything IT, like literally only two job postings. And so my thing with me was, it's like, normally wherever you end up graduating school at, that's usually where you end up staying and starting your career. So I was like, there's no way I'm coming back to Mississippi. Like there, there's no way, like I'm not gonna make any money here, especially for what I wanted to do. And so I have like my brothers and like my other side of my family, they stay out here in Texas or uh, specifically Dallas. I was like, okay, let me look up IT analysts, where the case may be out here in this area. So I typed that in and I got about like 20,000 results. So already off the top of my head, I'm like, I'm moving. So after like my freshman year of college, my mom, uh, you know, I, I used I came out here for the summer and stuff like that. And I was already kind of telling my mom, like, hey, mom, like, uh, you know, I want to move to Dallas. I want to move to Texas out this year. She's like, no, I don't really want you to move that far. Um, you know, I want to be that close to you and things like that. But what she didn't know, I was I, in my head, I was already moving. Like, it was in my head, I'm moving. Like, you're going to be mad at me, but I'm moving. <laughs> so I came out here. As soon as I came here, about two, three weeks of me living out here, I got a job working at Target. So I'm like, man, like even just like regular jobs, like you get jobs out here so fast. So, you know, I'm doing that. I'm trying to save my money to buy a car while I'm out here and also um, get an apartment for myself. So um, I started working at Walmart as well. So I was working overnight with Target, um, working from like nine to six, I want to say. And then I would go work um, at Walmart as a cashier from like, 9 a.m. to like 2 or 3 or something like that. Whatever the case was, like I wasn't really sleeping. Plus, I was going to school too. So, it, it, like, my, like I was literally not getting any rest at all. So, um, so I came out here. Um, I originally, uh, I went to community college. And honestly, in my honest opinion, I feel like every, if you don't know exactly what you want to do, go to a community college first. It's cheap. It, it's really cheap. You get your basic classes. It, even get refunds. It's it's just all all together. I feel like it, it's it's great for people that don't really know what they want to do, and also for people that's trying to learn different trades and tech and things like that. Because you can actually learn specific specific skills for what you want to do in the tech industry from a community college, and you don't have to go you know go to school for four years. You can just do it in like a year or so. But me personally, uh, I want to kind of go ahead and complete my four years of school. So I went there. I got my basics, but also uh, my degree in. I got my degree in cybersecurity. Um, originally, I wanted to be a network engineer, um, like working with Cisco routers and things like that. And i never forget my professor at the time, Professor Gaines, uh, great guy. Uh, every, like, and the way how he kind of set up his classes, uh, he was like, if you pass this certification for this class, I'm gonna automatically give you an A. And so me being me, I hear that, I'm like, okay, well, I'm not doing any work. I'm just gonna be studying for my certification. And when it's time, you know, when it's time for that, like, I don't make the best class. So that was like, I did that for like three classes, I wanna say. Um, I did it for my A plus, I did it for my CCNA, and I did it for my security plus and my red hat, and my red hat certification. So I got about four certifications, um, just in community college, just because my teacher was saying, hey, you know, if you guys pass the certification, then, you know, I give you an automatic A. So in my head, I'm like, that cool, that's easy, I'm doing that. So that's when I really kind of got um, introduced to it. Uh, one day in class, he was talking about uh, hacking. And you know, I'm, at this time, I'm still new to um, 
like the tech industry, I'm st I'm still really new to it. So you know, only thing I know about is programming, coding, um, and networking. That's that's really all I really knew at the time. So um, I tried out the coding um, for a little bit. Um, I didn't really like it. Um, I can code, but you have to have a different type of mentality to be a coder, man. That's that's a lot of work. <laughs> Uh, I mean, it does, like being able to code definitely helps you in the cybersecurity industry, help you as a security engineer, but it's not needed. And um, so I really like that, so I was like, okay, let me try networking. Networking was pretty cool, but then we kind of go out and start, I mean, we started working with like the Cisco routers and all of that, and I was just like, this is, this is cool, but it's boring. And so I still remember in class, I was talking to Professor Gaines, and I was like, I mean, like, what other things are there to do in the tech industry? Like, I've tried these two, and it's like, it's really, like, slow and boring. Like, it, you know, like, I want to always be on edge. I want to always be trying to learn different things. Always, you know, like, I mean, in, anytime you're in the tech industry, you're always going to have to learn either way it go. But it's like a different type of learning that I wanted to do, I guess. Like, I don't know. It, it's weird. I can't really explain it. But, yeah, so um, we started talking. He was like, um... Uh, have you ever heard of like ethical hacking? I was like, I'm aware of hacking, but people pay you to hack. Like this is new to me. I'm like, I didn't, I didn't know that. And so he was like, Yeah, um, look into this right here. Uh, he told me to look into the, um, cause he actually told me he was like enroll into my intro to security class next semester. And um, so that's what I did. But in the meantime, he was like, Hey, um, check out Kali Linux and you know like work on your Linux skills. Because, you know, you're in the cybersecurity industry, you're going to be mostly be working with Linux systems and Linux servers and stuff like that. So I'm like, okay. So I just start just looking like, what is Linux? I didn't really know what Linux was. It was a foreign thing to me. But then I found out it was an operating system. You know, most web servers use, use Linux to do this. So I just started learning, like, basic commands on the terminal, um, you know, system administration. And it's pretty much all of that stuff. So I, I started learning that, and by this time I already had my A plus, and I was working in Geek Squad. So I had quit my my job at Best. I mean, uh, I quit my job at Walmart and Target um, to start working at Best Buy because I feel like it was a it looked better on my resume for me trying to go into the tech industry. Um, I was working, you know, in Geek Squad or whatever. So fast forward, you know. So now, you know, I'm, I'm linked to Linux. Um, I'm looking to kind of security plus certification. Um, by this time, I already had my A plus. Yeah, so I had my A plus, and I was also working on my CCNA. I was in Cisco Academy, so at my community college, where it's the Cisco Academy, where you can learn, um, get your CCNA, your CCNP, and I think that's it. Um, I didn't really care for networking, so I was just like, I'm just gonna get the CCNA and stop it there. So I was doing that, and you know, I finally got the certification. And now the next semester roll in, and I'm taking uh, my intro to security and firewalls and firewalls and I forgot the name of the class. But it has something to do with firewalls. So I'm just in here and I'm just like learning all of this stuff. I'm like, why? Like, people pay you to hack, and I just immediately got fascinated with it. I'm like, I can literally. You know, at this time, I'm young. It's like, I can break into people's computers and get paid for this now. And so when I started learning that, or when I heard about that, I just, like, fell in love with cybersecurity. Like, I would stay up to 6, 7 o'clock in the morning, like, building, like, Python scripts, Linux scripts, um, just pretty much learning as much as I can. Like, I was literally, like, staying up 6, 7 o'clock in the morning all the time doing this and a lot of people don't know that when they see me you know they want like oh he's a nerd or anything like that but spoiler alert I'm a nerd <laughs> but yeah so you know all of that you know kind of started happening and then um, I passed my security plus um, certification um, at the, like midway through the class or whatever like that so I actually just kind of I ain't gonna say I stopped going to class but I started focusing on honing my skills myself so you know what everybody was else else was in class like learn about you know security and things like that. At this point, I'm looking at like ethical hacking certifications. Like I'm just in this rabbit hole of you know trying to find different things. So by this time, um, like 
I was going to like hackathons, I was going to uh, capture the flag tournaments, I was going to security conferences, um, I was just pretty much doing everything um, by this time. And this is like year two of me being out here in Texas. So year two, um, I'm real comfortable with my skill set. And I'm like, okay, you know, I'm ready to start applying for internships. Um, but this is the thing. I couldn't land the internship for nothing. Like, it was so hard, like, trying to get an internship. Like, I'm on Indeed. I, like, I'm applying for all types of internships, but I was never getting any replies or ever getting, you know, any of, you know, nothing. I wouldn't even get callbacks. So... Um, you know, I met somebody and they told me, it was like, hey, uh, you should like look on LinkedIn or whatever. And in my head, I'm like, I've never heard of LinkedIn. Like, what is LinkedIn? And he was like, uh, the way he kind of explained it to me, he was like, LinkedIn is like the Facebook of uh, professional networking. So I was like, huh, that's interesting. Let me go sign up. Let me go get this. And, you know, let me create a profile. So at first, like, I created a profile. You know, I, it looked boring. So I was like, I'm not going to do this. And then, so... I got to a class where we had to, uh, well, like one of my classes, uh, pretty much, I forgot exactly the name of the class, but it was mandatory there to create a LinkedIn and network with people on there um, that's in our relevant fields. So with me doing that, I got on LinkedIn and, you know, I just started the way I, so this is the way I did my LinkedIn. Um, it's probably a little spammy, but whatever the case may be. So I got on LinkedIn and like the first thing that I did Oops, sorry about that, y'all. Oh, sorry about that. Yeah. yeah. So the first thing I did when I got on LinkedIn, I would look for similar job titles that I wanted to be into. So if I want to be a security engineer, I would go into LinkedIn and I'll type in security engineer, Dallas, Texas. And i send, like, requests to all of them. If I seen, like, recruiters for a company that I want to work for, I'm going to send a request for all the recruiters that's in my area. Or send a request to all the recruiters that's in my area. And I'm like, okay, somebody going to see my profile. Like, I don't, somebody is going to see it. So at this time, you know, like, I was kind of doing, like, the little spammy uh, thing. But I was, people was following me back or people was, like, accepting my request and things like that. And so, and this is when I really just started getting, like, big with the uh, security, the security projects that I was doing, like, I was building socks. I was creating um, security scripts. I was just like always sharing my projects um, on LinkedIn. And one of the projects that really just grabbed a lot of attention to this day, I still get um, people to uh, DM, not DM me, but yeah, DM me or PM me um, about the article or about the blog that I created when I created my sock. So um, it was this interesting case um, at the time where they were saying China was, a, you know, always attacking the United States, whatever the case may be. And with me, it's just like, I don't, I don't really believe in news. I don't really believe everything the government say. I'm more of like, let, let me see for myself. So I decided, um, I went ahead and I created like an um, ET2 instance. And I made the, um, I made it vulnerable. I made it, you know, specifically vulnerable so I can see like what type of text they was gonna be, um, you know, witnessing or experiencing in the case may be. And I also used this thing called Security Onion um, to create the dashboards and alerts. That's to see where the traffic was coming from. And, um, you know, it, it was true. It was coming from China. So I just pretty much wrote up uh, an article and wrote up a blog about that. So when I wrote the blog and I put it on LinkedIn, like, it just blew up. Like, everybody was just like, oh, my God, like, who is this kid? Like, you know. I'm really interested in what you're doing, you know, that's really dope that you did that, like what made you do that? And I was just like, uh, I just have a curious mind. So with me creating that blog post, I started receiving like so many like in-mails on LinkedIn, like crews just completely reaching out to me and you know, that was the case. And so um, when, uh, so yeah. So when all that started happening, um, I started kind of making my name, uh, started making a name for myself um, on LinkedIn or, you know, yeah, on LinkedIn. And so I was like, okay, let me try to go out and actually network in person. Uh, I am an introverted person, so it's really hard for me to kind of network and kind of talk with people and stuff like that because I'm introvert. It's just, or I get introvert, shyness, whatever, whatever you want to call it. Like, I'm just not really 
they're good when it comes to talking to people and all that stuff like that. So, um, you know, I started going to these security conferences and these capture the flag uh, competitions within the DFW area. So, uh, my first capture the flag, um, instant, no, was it? Yeah, capture the flag. I went to capture the flag. Uh, went to a capture the flag tournament, and um, the team that I was on went up place in like second or third. But the guy that I was, uh, so the person I was on the team with, or the guy that was on my team, he was a CISO at like this big oil and gas company. So I was like, oh snap, he was like, you know, like you seem like a real bright, uh, bright kid. Like, are you in college? Like, what are you doing right now? I was like, uh, yeah, I'm in college right now. I'm actually uh, like searching for an internship. He was like, we actually have some internships open for the summer. So I'm like, all right, cool. Like, yeah, like, let me do this. Like, this is my first internship. So, um, so I had got that internship offer. Um, just pretty much based off like you know he saw what I was doing and he was um he was interested in it. So you know um with that happening um and then also I'm getting this buzz on LinkedIn and so I started actually receiving internships on LinkedIn as well. And so um I was asking some internships that was actually paying paying me way more money than this previous internship. This internship I think I was getting like twenty dollars an hour, and I was having other internship offers that was like thirty thirty five dollars an hour. But I turned those offers down because of the knowledge that this guy had. Like he was a well-known, respected security engineer or security guy in the DFW area. And I'm like, okay, if I can like, you know, just, I mean, $20 an hour is still a lot of money for me being in college with no real bills. So I was like, I can sacrifice that to get up under him, learn him and get inside his network where he can refer me to other people. And so that's what I did. And I can literally say like that internship, that may have been like the best internship experience I had. Like he let me do whatever. Like I, I was learning digital forensics. Um, I was actually learning how to do pen tests. Um, I was actually doing like a security code review. Like I was literally doing everything. Like I mean, yeah, the experience I had, it was crazy. And um, and so he actually wanted to bring me back again for an internship, but they didn't necessarily have the budget to bring me back interns. So he was like, hey, you know, um, I actually have a few colleagues that I can refer you over to if you're looking for an internship for the fall semester or where the case may be. So like literally every internship I had got after him or after working for him, it has something to do with him. And so that's why I tell people like, you know, sometimes, especially when you're trying to learn or you're trying to get into the industry, Sometimes you gotta sacrifice money to get the actual experience. Like, you know, like first getting to the first off, even just getting a job or getting an interview in cybersecurity is like it's pretty hard. Because then what people don't really notice, like yes, cybersecurity is quote unquote they have entry level um, jobs, but cybersecurity is not really entry level. You know, most people that's uh, pivot to cybersecurity. They have some of the system admin um, experience, like network engineering experience. You know, they have some other experience within the tech industry, and they just pivot over to cybersecurity. A lot of people don't know that, but yes, that's that's why it's so hard to get quote unquote entry level jobs in cybersecurity. And so yeah, like you know, the, you you have to sacrifice money sometimes to get that experience. You know, a lot of people don't want to do that sometimes, but you got to think about this. Like, I sacrifice ten dollars an hour. You know, at at the beginning of my career, to now making six figures easily, like you know, if I would have never met that guy, or if I would have never came and worked with him, you know, how would, like I probably never got my second and third and fourth internship because each one was like a referral from him or for somebody I was working with that had referred me from I me mean, that was referred by him. So it was like a, a chain, a daisy chain effect, or a chain effect, a chain effect. <laughs> so it's like a chain effect of like everything that I was getting. And so like my next internship, I actually got like $35 an hour. So it was like, okay, you got $20 an hour here. And then the next semester jumps to 35. So it was like, oh wow, you know, like that ROI, it jumped. Uh, and you know, that was me also negotiating. I've always been a negotiator. So every internship offer I got, I negotiated. And uh, you know, I, I don't say negotiate all the time. No, I negotiate all the time, negotiate all the time. But you have to be like aware of your skill set, um, you know, when you, when you want to negotiate. 
I know what I mean, because I had like all this ton of experience. Like, like at this time, honestly, you know, with me just working with him, like that that summer, I may have got about two years of experience of everything that I was doing. So it just really like brought in my skill set and. I, and when I brought in my skill set like that, I got introduced to new things. I just started going even crazier when it came to um, cybersecurity. I just started getting up, like I was literally obsessed with it. Um, I actually still remember this time where I actually had kind of find this vulnerability in my apartment website. And I, you know, I came and I showed them, I told them about it. At the time, I didn't know this was illegal. But yeah, that's illegal, so don't do that. But um, yeah, so I showed it to them, or whatever the case may be, and they ended up giving me a gift card, a three hundred dollar gift card for finding that. So that's my kind of guy. Started getting introduced to bug bounties and stuff like that. I, I ain't never really get into like the bug bounty thing, but you know that is a a, sec, uh, a sector that you can go or you know where you can go into the industry. But anyways, so yeah, so now I'm back into um, this second internship. It's pretty cool. Um, I'm, I'm learning a lot. I'm, you know, like I'm starting an internship after internship after internship after internship, and so it, it, it's just making everything easier now. Like I literally have a, a internship, uh, a internship every semester of like my time when I went to the University of North Texas because uh, that's where I went to school at. So and it all came from that one person, and so uh, you know as that went on. And you know, I started getting experience and things like that. Towards like the end of my my junior year, or yeah, so end of my junior year, or like the semester before, or uh, the first semester of my junior year, I went ahead. I was like, okay, I'm going to start looking for full time jobs, cause you know, like I don't really know how this is gonna go. Like, you know, like I'm I'm not gonna wait till my senior year to you know try to look for a job, cause that's when people start getting like. Uh, post grad depression. That's really what, what a lot of come from. They, you know, they wouldn't really prepare themselves to actually find a job. They want to wait like the semester to graduate and things like that. And the hiring process for a lot of companies is is already long in itself, two three months, or you know, when you're in college, one two three months because they usually have programs and stuff like that. So already like you're behind whenever you're doing that. So um, you know, I started reaching out with com reaching out to companies, and it was like this one specific company. Um, they had reached out to me. They actually reached out to me um, my junior year. Um, yeah, so it was like winter break of my junior year, and it was like you know we're really um, impressed by your skill set. You know we would love to interview you. Um, you seem like you seem like a bright kid. You know let, let's do it. So um, you know I was talking to the recruiter and I was like you know I'm, I still have like a year left in school. And you know I'm I'm you know I'm not really sure how this works. I'm not sure if you guys will actually wait on me for an entire year, you know, to kind of bring me back on because this wasn't like one of those uh, undergraduate or you know fresh fresh out of college um, positions. It's more like a mid level, like yeah, I guess it's like a mid level type job or position. And I was telling her I was like, hey, you know, I'm in college and I still have a year left. And she was like, oh wow, like I actually wasn't, you know, I'm, I'm really shocked from like the experience and what I'm seeing you doing. Like you, you, you have a lot of experience for being a college student. And so I'm like, all right, you know. Uh, so she was like, uh, you know, can I reach back out to you like the semester before you graduate? And um, I'm like, yeah, cool. In my head, I'm like, this is a year from now. She's not going to remember this. It's not happening. Like, because I, I think about it in the tech industry, especially in cybersecurity, recruiters will ghost you. Like, you'll talk to them, you'll interview with them, and they'll just completely ghost you. And so in my head, I'm like, she's not going to remember me. So, comes then, because think about me, I graduated uh, in the fall. So I graduated December of 2018. And so I had just ended my internship with Cisco in July. Yeah, in July. So yeah, I ended my internship in July with um, Cisco. Um, I... I, that's a that's an entire that's a completely new that's that's a whole another video that I can do about that internship experience, that 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 internship experience is something else. That's, yeah, that, that, I dealt with a lot of the internship with other um, some of the other interns, but yeah, that's that's a completely different uh, story that I can talk to you all about. But yeah, so I was coming off that internship, and she reached out to me 
Um, she had reached out to me. It was literally like a week. Um, I had just updated my um, LinkedIn, you know, like let you know, you know how you just kind of at the end of the internship, you know. I just want to thank everybody, you know. I mean, or you know, I want to thank everybody for you know the experience I had here. You know, blase, blase. You know, you want to look good on LinkedIn, so you kind of fluff stuff up sometimes with some of your experiences. Because I had the worst internship experience ever in my life. So yeah, I had like the worst experience ever at that company. But anywho, so uh, you know, I did that, and she reached out to me. She was like, "Hey, um, so this is you're going to see your senior semester now. You're going to see your senior year now, huh?" I was like, "Uh, yeah." And uh, she's like, uh, you still up to like, you still interested in the company? You still want to interview? And I was like, oh, like you, you really, you really remember me? <laughs> and she was like, yeah, you know, you don't really get like, you don't really catch too many young people with the experience that you have. And she's like, I actually like, I put it on my calendar to um, actually contact you um, on August first. And so uh, she reached out to me, and I had like, I, I interviewed with about three teams. And every last team one of them. So I had nine interviews with this company in like three days. Like it was like the way that was moving, it was like, we want him. Like it was, we want him. Like they literally, um, they gave me three teams to choose from. That was like, you know, you can choose from this team, this team, this team, or whatever the case may be. And um, the team I chose was a uh, team that was kind of stationed on a plane though, or whatever. So I was like, okay, cool. Like I like this, you know, I like this. And also that team was paying a lot more money. Um, so, the initial offer that I had got from them was eighty three thousand. So my initial offer that they um, gave me was eighty three thousand dollars with a ten percent performance bonus and no sign on bonus. And so you also got to think at the time, you know, like I'm I'm in like I'm interviewing with people, like I'm you know I'm already receiving offers, so. You know, I, I let I tend me personally. I tend to always I always let recruiters know when I'm interviewing with other people, so they kind of speed up the um, interview process. And that's also probably why I did nine interviews in three or four days, because I was letting them know, like, hey, I'm interviewing with this company, this company, this company, this company. And she was like, oh, okay, like let me let me hurry up and try to speed this up. And so she got offered like when I came out of college, I had already said like I'm not taking no offer less than eighty thousand dollars. Like I don't care. Like I, I don't. I'm not going to no uh, newly grad program. I, I didn't want to do any of that. But some fact, like I already had like those experiences. I feel like I was a uh, contributor already. Like I can actually come in and make changes, and you know, actually be um, a valuable asset for whatever team I wanted to do. And you know, usually when you go into some of those programs, they're either you know they kind of reckon with you. When it comes to like, uh, you know, they're trying to build up your experience and stuff like that. But I didn't need any experience. I didn't need to be built up or anything like that. So at least that's what I felt like. I was real confident in my skill set, and I was like, I want to go mid level. And so um, I had received the offer. Um, where did I receive the offer from? I received the offer from Baylor's Baylor Scott and White. Uh, it's a hospital here. So I, I received the offer from them. And it was about seventy-eight thousand um, dollars, no sign-on bonus. And I had received another um, offer from Citibank that was paying me seventy-five thousand with a ten-k sign-on bonus. And so in my head, I'm like, no one's trying to give me like eighty-k salary or whatever. So when she initially gave me that offer, in my head, I'm like, okay, 80, you know, eighty-three thousand dollars, I can do that. You know, like CDs give me seventy-five and a ten-k sign-on bonus. Or whatever, you know, I get that 10k sign on bonus, but that's going to be taxed like 40%. So I'm only going to get like $4,000 of that, $4,000 of that. So they're kind of going to bring it up like 79000 for the first year. So what I decided to do, um, I decided to lie about one of the offers that I received. <laughs> uh, so I had came back and I told her, I was like, hey, uh, this company here, they they're actually giving me a uh, eighty nine eighty yeah they're giving me eighty nine thousand with uh, eight thousand signing bonus and for my performance uh, they give me a ten percent performance for performance boost or performance uh, bonus for that and so she was like okay let me kind of go back and let me see if I can get you a better offer so she came back and they gave me an offer of ninety one thousand. With a ten percent bonus and a nine, 
a ten percent, yeah, nine thousand dollars sign on bonus as well too. So, you know, I was like, you know, and that's why I always try to tell people, always negotiate your salaries. Like, there, there's always room, some type of room for negotiation. Like, I was actually talking to one recruiter, and she was like, you would actually be surprised um, of the amount of people that don't actually negotiate their salaries. And she was like, we actually, as a recruiter, we usually almost always expect for like, you know, some of my candidates to negotiate. Um, you know, she was like, sometimes they already have like a counter number to where they can actually already come back like, well, we can give you this instead. So I don't know how true that is, but this is just something I was told. So when I when I was told that, I was like, I'm always going to negotiate. I don't, I don't care where it is, uh, where the case may be, I'm, I'm always going to negotiate. And also another thing too, uh, never try to give out the first number. Because I know when I was talking, she was asking me, like, you know, how much money are you looking for? You know, what are you looking for? And stuff like that. And the way I always try to reverse it and put it back on them, um, I always kind of say, you know, hey, well, uh, you know, I am reading the job description and things like that. But, you know, within my time in this industry, most of the time, like, what you guys are asking for in the job description is nothing close to what I'm actually doing. So I would actually have to get, like, a holistic view of what my day-to-day -day activity would be. But, you know, what do you guys pay range for this position? So I say all that and try to flip it on them. I'm like, okay, let me see what y'all range is. And then I can potentially try to give you a couple of numbers. So I'm just pretty much trying to gauge the market with that. Uh, but yeah, so uh, I end up, um, I, I negotiate that um, salary and I end up getting like my first year salary was like $108,000 for the first year. But I didn't even stay there like a complete, yeah, I stayed there for about eight months. Uh, I mean, the work, I, it was pretty fun, but the work was like a little boring. Um, it was like real repetitive. So I actually ended up leaving and going to consulting. Um, I'll talk about it in another video. But um, I guess, yeah, that's just pretty much what I wanted to do. I just wanted to share um, that little journey, uh, what I've done or what I did. Shout out to get into this industry. So, um, yeah, you know, you guys enjoyed this video, you know, and share it, you know. Like, subscribe, the little notification, little thing, you know, do all that. But uh, yeah, I know this video is long and it's probably kind of all over the place. I'm kind of new to the whole YouTube thing. So I try to do better with some of my videos. But yeah, that's, that's, that's that. Thanks, you guys. Thank you guys for tuning in.